We are talking birds today. Is a bird the right pet for your family? And Dr. Amy Guernsey with University Veterinary Care Center is here with Tater to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? Great, so glad you brought Tater with you today. Yeah. Tell us about Tater. Um, so Tater is a 32-year-old female cockatoo. Um, she's owned by one of our staff members and just a really friendly pet. She's so beautiful. I just love her colors and yeah. her eyes. She's a good bird. Well, do birds make good pets? Um, they can for the right family. What I tend to encourage people to do is really research the species of bird that you're interested in getting um, because their needs, be it cage or diet or whatever, vary greatly depending on which species you go with. A canary has a lot different needs than a cockatoo um, and their lifespans vary a lot. You know, a canary may live 10 to 15 years, cockatoos can live up to 70. Wow. Um, so you have to really think about, am I gonna be able to care for this bird, not just for their lifetime, but maybe for my lifetime as well. Wow, yeah, something to definitely you wanna think about before you go out and adopt a bird. Uh, what are some of the health concerns that you need to be aware of if you own a bird? Yeah, so uh, one of the things to keep in mind that most of the, the bird species that we keep as pets, um, unless you're doing falconry, they tend to be, um, prey species, so they, they will hide their signs of illness for a really long time. Um, so if you ever notice them sitting fluffed in the bottom of the cage, not as energetic as normal, not as vocal as normal, not as playful as normal, those are all signs that they may be dealing with some, some sickness and, and need to be checked out. Do they need regular vet care? Um, so if you ever see any of those signs, for sure, you know, give somebody a call and, and see how they're doing. Um, we tend to see them pretty regularly for grooms. Um, out in the wild, they do a lot of foraging and, and that sort of thing that kind of keep their beak and their nails ground down. Um, in captivity, they're not working for a living anymore, so we tend to help them with that, um, grinding their nails and grinding their beak into a more appropriate shape and conformation um, so they don't run into an overgrown beak. Um, outside of that, you know, if you've got a brand new bird, a lot of times we'll do baseline blood work. So if they ever do become ill, we can compare back to when they were well um, and know if they've had any major changes for that individual. Well, what about with other pets? Uh, can a home that has maybe cats or dogs adopt a bird? They can coexist with the right individuals. Uh, again, it kind of comes down to the specific families. Um, you know, I definitely try to keep birds and cats separate, separated as much as possible because a cat bite to a bird can be very, very detrimental. Um, but then again, I have clients that their their birds snuggle with their cats, so it oh really goodness. just depends on the on the family. Wow. Well, great. Well, I'm so glad that you brought Tater here with you today. She's just so cute. She's so calm. I'm just she, she's a, amazed. She's a really good bird. She's snuggly. Snuggly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being here this morning. And if you'd like more information about University Veterinary Care Center, head over to University Vet Care.